The name says it all. King Ghidorah, Godzilla's oldest and most formidable arch-nemesis, as they have fought many times over the course of Earth's history, mainly for the title of the Alpha. In fact, Ghidorah has battled Godzilla more times than any of his other foes. King Ghidorah was the first monster created to specifically be a foe for other monsters, rather than starting off as a monster to menace humanity. Welcome to Factolic, and this video is about the anatomy and biology of one of the most fearsome foes of Godzilla. So, without further ado, let's get them straight. In the Monsterverse, King Ghidorah first appears in a cave painting in the post credit scene of Kong at Skull Island in 2017, and then served as the main antagonist in this year's Monsterverse movie, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. As far as naming goes, Ghidorah is also known as Monster Zero, Titanus Ghidorah, The Devil, Death Song of Three Storms, Mo, Larry and Curly, apart from the King-branded titular name. The three-headed monster stands at a height of an astounding 521 feet and weighs a massive 141,056 tons and easily is larger than Godzilla, like most of his past incarnations. But in spite all of that size and weight, Ghidorah can fly at a top speed of 550 knots without even breaking a sweat. The latest incarnation of Gengidora maintains the traditional core design of the character, being a giant bipedal dragon with three heads on long serpentine necks, two tails and two large bat-like wings at his sides, which stands upright on his two hind legs. Ghidorah's twin tails also contain spiked bludgeons at their tips that can rattle as an intimidation display. Its legs are digitigrade, which meant that it walked on its toes with avian-like feet, similar to the 2001 incarnation. Ghidorah's eyes are fiery red, which seem to glow yellow whenever he charges up and fires his gravity beams, and his tongues are forked. Its entire body is covered in overlapping golden scales, which, according to Monarch, actually contains trace amounts of gold. Yes, you heard that right. Pretty befitting for a king, I suppose. The only parts of Ghidorah's body that aren't covered in scales are the membranes of its wings, which are made of smooth skin, and the fronts of its necks, which are also covered with skin but with a ridged texture, and they're all still golden in colour. The heads of the Titan have a crown of horns similar to the Heisei incarnation, but each horn is longer and more curved. The horns also tend to flare depending on Ghidorah's current mood. This creature embodies absolute destruction and the threat of nuclear annihilation by foreign powers with extreme explicitness. It should be noted that the Monsterverse version of Ghidorah is the first incarnation of the monster to have the ability to regenerate its heads. Well, that's a pretty handy trick that this monster has up its sleeves. When it comes to Ghidorah's roar, Michael Doherty explains that Ghidorah's roar in the Monsterverse is meant to emulate his original high-pitched cackling roar from the Showa series, but far more intense and louder. The unique point of this incarnation's roar is that sometimes Ghidorah's heads will roar one by one continuously three times. Ghidorah also releases a series of growls similar to a lion's. There is even one moment where Ghidorah lets out his Heisei roar. Did you notice it as well while watching King of the Monsters? Or probably not. Feel free to mention in the comments section below. The three-headed Ghidorah is something rather different among the various other kaiju, but is not totally unprecedented in the animal world. In the real world, the condition of having more than one head is called polycephaly and is generally caused by a failed split of twin embryos. Since Ghidorah has three heads, it is basically a tricephalic organism and each head may have other parts that are theirs, such as the snake called We that had both male and female genitals as well as two heads. Because they are their own twins and have separate minds, it is not uncommon for the heads to disagree and even fight amongst themselves. 
This and other complications led to most polycephalic organisms dying early on. However, King Ghidorah displays none of this, and no film has had the heads argue amongst themselves despite how frenzied the battles get. This basically suggests that the creature's alien physiology has the brain located somewhere other than the heads, like at the base of all three necks, with large nerve clusters in the heads to process sensory information, but do its real thinking in a more secure part of the body. I mean, this is a monster that travels through space in a magnetic meteor and forms from a fireball. Having a brain in its chest is possibly the least weird thing about it. Speaking of surviving in space, Ghidorah originally was shown to only do that in meteor form, but later was shown to have him fly in space via some unexplained method which had the continued flapping of his wings. Each of Ghidorah's heads has a distinct personality. The middle head, Ichi, appears to be the leader, being the most intelligent, dominant one of the three, and seems to be the most genuinely malicious and malevolent among the heads. The right head, Ni, is the middle one's loyal and obedient follower, as well as the most irritable and aggressive of the three, while also displaying a sense of pragmatism in battle. The left head, San, also called Kevin, seems to be the least intelligent and calmest of the heads, and is always easily distracted and unfocused, often to the frustration and disappointment of the middle head, who has to forcibly get its companion back on task. Now that reminds me of the secondborns, who are known to be the troublemakers in the family. Maybe the left head was the secondborn after all. Well, jokes apart, King Ghidorah's past is largely unknown. It is known that he arrived on Earth from another world in the past, seeking to convert it into a habitat suitable for himself. Ghidorah's goals would then bring him into conflict with Godzilla a number of times, who would continuously foil his attempts to terraform the planet, turning the two into bitter enemies. Ghidorah, despite being revealed to be an alien, is very intelligent and aware of the consequences his actions cause. He is surprisingly capable of manipulation, managing to get multiple titans to help him with his goals in destroying big parts of humanity, to adapt the environment to him. Ghidorah and Godzilla have been arch enemies for an unspecified amount of time, but most likely they've been enemies for a very long time. So, that was all for this video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified for any new video we upload.